All right, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the Zoom call and if you're practicing with us after on YouTube. My name is Jill Davey and I'm a teacher with True North Insight. And tonight the practice is really inspired by um, and informed by a, a poem from one of my favorite authors. Rosemary Watola Tromer, and of course you'll find the link to her website below this uh, recording. And uh, this poem is called Stitching It Together. And uh, just before I came, well about an hour before I came on the call here, I was um, driving home from Orangeville and kind of drove through an area that was having tornado warnings and um, yeah I was definitely scanning this guy we're looking at the wall of black for any rotations but I made it home safely obviously and a few trees down and such but it, at one point I was driving along and to the left was like clear sky like bright blue super clear sky and then in front of me you could see the definite wall like a line drawn in the sand of dark dark gray um that was kind of right over where i was heading to um and on the right was a, <laughs> a wall with uh, lots of interesting colors and uh, but while i was uh driving through this it, this poem was resonant for me this phrase stitching it together of just i was thinking about just being in the center you know like the eye of the storm and just had to keep dropping my shoulders and being aware really take aware and taking it all in but also centered and calm and hopefully responsive to what was happening around me <clears throat> and uh yeah so i was just i was planning to work with this poem tonight anyways but then it, it showed up for me at, at that time and really uh seemed to be help me just uh with what looks like the duality of light and dark or peace and calm, you know calm and storm and just stitching it together in my aware in awareness felt really centering and calming and uh yeah so it was it was helpful <clears throat> uh so for folks that are following this recording after the fact if you click the link down below you can open the poem and kind of read read along as we practice with it tonight or you can just listen and the this poem is inspired by a line that rosemary was inspired by from another author stuart kessenbaum um, that says in our imperfect world we are meant to repair to stitch together what beauty there is. And so sometimes she takes a line from a song or a poem or piece of prose and then that inspires the writing of the poem. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the first paragraph stanza, I guess it is, pardon me, not paragraph, of, of this poem really invokes all of the sense doors. So she speaks to seeing, the sight sense door, to smelling, tasting, and touching. Um, she doesn't mention hearing, but that comes in the next stanza. And so it, it, uh, it really invokes a sense of waking up. And, and this is something very important in the, in the Dharma, in meditation practice, is attuning to 
awakening paying attention to our sense doors because they're always happening in the present moment <clears throat> so I'll just read this first <coughs> part pardon me I have a little bit of a post COVID cough <clears throat> uh, she says to d I, and I love this word she uses a few times gather it's like stitching together she says today I gather the morning light as it angles across the, the lawn as it angles gold across the lawn isn't that beautiful gather the morning light just that word is so evocative it just we just feel that sense of drawing in to a sense of center but at the same time connecting to what's around us today I gather the morning light as it angles gold across the lawn I gather the scent of fennel fronds in the garden and the surprising sweetness of the one bite strawberries and the softness of the shawl I thought was lost but today I found I gather the weight of my daughter as she leans into me on the couch and the smooth burn of rye whiskey and the purr of the cat as she naps deeper into my lap and I stitch them together with the thread of my attention there's two more parts to this poem but I'll just pause there to just uh, highlight the the wisdom here of each of these sense doors as I already mentioned and stitching them together with the thread of my attention and that's just a beautiful way to describe a meditation practice isn't it it's so much what we do and and in the teachings of the Buddha in meditation there's an understanding that there's a sixth sense door so there's the five hearing seeing tasting smelling touch and the sixth is the mind is also considered a sense door meaning one of the ways that we make contact with the world and at first it may seem like the mind is a secondary connection with the world like we hear something and then we think about it or we smell something and then we have an idea or a memory about it but um, you might notice that there are times yes that is true and at times the mind do you ever find yourself saying like where did that come from <laughs> just thoughts or some song or some memory some fantasy some tune that isn't connected to something else it just arises in the mind <laughs> so bizarre it, I'm often often enough anyways um, bemused by the sometimes absurdity of the mind and like where did that come from just so bizarre and random <laughs> and so the mind is is also considered a sense door in that it's uh, one of the ways we're interacting and knowing this world and so it's really important it's part of the first foundation of mindfulness mindfulness of body to be attending to these sense doors as I mentioned already because they are all that contact with the world is happening only in the present moment always so it's our, our immediate touch point and those of us who experience anxiety you may often have heard reference to uh, there's like a li little formula I should have looked it up beforehand but I didn't think of it till this moment um, where you you s if you're kind of in a panic or a anxiety state um, activated 
then you stop and like name for yourself five things you can see and four things you can hear and three things you can smell two things you can taste or and touch so I might not have the numbers and the order correctly that's not really as important um, but just doing that just helps to mm, interrupt the momentum of the storyline or the panic or the activation and bring us into the present moment where we're like looking seeing tasting feeling um, and this helps to regulate and calm the nervous system sometimes and uh, <clears throat> So as she names all these beautiful experiences and stitching them together with the thread of my attention, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it my attention, but um, the thread of awareness, the thread of attention, it's not really mine. I don't feel a sense of ownership over it, but it it is also something that's cultivated and experienced within this system that I call me. Uh, and then in the next stanza she goes on to say long ago I learned what I focus on creates me wow so that's something interesting to reflect on that you know what mm, what I'm paying attention to grows and, and then, but she goes on to say, not that I ignore the bindweed, the news, the drought, the young raccoon dead beside the road. I do not turn away from the stories that make me weep. And, and this I love. I am willing to be ferocious, to stand up for what I know is true. So there's an acceptance of what is and also a ferociousness to stand up like this is right action to that there's times where and and it could show up as right speech uh, right lively at all all the ways of the path of what we're willing to actually stand up for and uh take action in the world it's not just blithely accepting oh this is how things are but it comes from acceptance of how things are that we then take action and be ferocious um, yeah so I just love that she calls into awareness all these beauties the sweet strawberry and the soft blanket and all these the beautiful golden light and then she brings in the drought and the news and the death and um, which is what it felt like for me on the drive with the the light and the dark and driving into the storm <clears throat> and lastly she the last stanza but I study what is beautiful and what is generous. I offer it my devotion. Ah, Roseberry, slay me. <laughs> this devotion is such a divine, touching word. <clears throat> it speaks to me of the our ethics and our precepts and our... Um, taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha or whatever it is we feel devotion to, committed to, inspired by. Um, but studying what is beautiful and what is generous, this we've talked about lots of times about negativity bias that's part of the, this human animal and how we actually need to cultivate and incline our awareness to joy and beauty, compassion, love, because 
otherwise they can slip by unnoticed very very easily we get overwhelmed by the the news and the drought and the aging sickness and death and uh, it's a very important part of the practice the path cultivating joy connection um, compassion which is part of generosity and then she says even in this moment writing this poem I stitch in the pauses and the stumblings these two are beautiful because they are true I stitch in the pure potential that steeps in uncertainty I stitch in silence I stitch in hope <clears throat> the pure potential that steeps in uncertainty you know that not that place of not knowing is a place of wisdom a place of awakeness if we are always in a place of knowing hopefully we have good friends that will say honey <laughs> honey no <laughs> it's uh, <clears throat> important to be in a place of that pure potential in uncertainty not knowing because there is a place of aliveness and engagement and agency that we then have the opportunity to respond and not in a place of prejudging and reacting and projecting all those skillful qualities and of course she ends with stitching in silence a very important part of our practice and ends with I stitch in hope oh my goodness <laughs> thank you please yes hope <laughs> it's such a important quality in the Dharma um, hope is is like mm, sada faith in this tradition doesn't mean like blind faith where you just take someone's word for it or you're told what to believe just have faith just don't question it uh, this type of sata s-a-d-d-h-a or faith is a trust in the possibility a trust in the potential of compassion and love and connection so stitching in hope for me resonates with that of not blind hope but this the Dharma understanding of what it means to have faith hope trust reliance in what we know to be true what we directly know that it is possible to be free from suffering because we've experienced it it is possible to be free from clinging and craving it is possible to have ease in the midst of the storm <clears throat> so there's a, a great deal of beauty and dharma and wisdom and inspiration in this poem I know I broke it up in this reading but of course I'm going to read it through without my <laughs> commentary which I'm sure will be appreciated um, and and we'll let it uh, inspire our practice uh, awakening to these sense doors right now and um, not turning away from what is here as well um, in in all of its forms and uh, resting in the silence so let's adjust our posture for practice <laughs> all the all the dear ones that we've got two chihuahuas here panting because of the thunder that um, I'm just going to see if they want to go out of the room or stay so one sec you guys want out <laughs>
put there. There we go. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, checking in with yourself as you find your posture for a practice tonight, it, depending on your energy and your body, if you need to lay down or stand up or walking or find some support so that you're really sitting upright depending on what time of day it is you're practicing and how your how your being is <clears throat> okay So once you've found your posture, uh, also including in your choice of posture, the position for your eyes that's supportive for you. So some might help find it helpful to have the eyes open and gazing at something peaceful or beautiful or looking around your space and um, calming your system. Some of us find it helpful to practice with eyes slightly open but resting downward, just bringing in a bit of light and present, present moment awareness. Especially since we're going to start with that sense door, you might like to practice with your eyes open for, but restful eyes um, and then if you like you could close them when you're if you feel ready for that and before I read the poem and again we'll just take some time to land into the body Perhaps it's warm in your environment, maybe, maybe not. And if it is, can that sense of warmth help you soften the muscles? So the shoulders slide down. The weight of the shoulders all resting into the hands, relaxed hands. And checking in with any of the habit places of tension in your body, becoming familiar with them and Seeing if they can let go or soften or widen a little bit or a lot. Noticing if there's a holding in at the belly that could let go a little bit. And then connecting with the sensations of contact and pressure, texture of the body meeting the ground. And in this first part of the poem, it might inspire you to recall or call in noticings of sweetness and beauty from the day or 
recent time or the present moment. <clears throat> Stitching it together by Rosemary Watola Tromer. Inspired by Stuart Kesterbaum, Kestenbaum saying, in our imperfect world, we are meant to repair and stitch together what beauty there is. Today I gather the morning light as it angles gold across the lawn. I gather the scent of fennel fronds in the garden. And the surprising sweetness of the one bite strawberries. And the softness of the shawl I thought was lost but today I found. I gather the weight of my daughter as she leans into me on the couch and the smooth burn of rye whiskey and the purr of the cat as she naps deeper into my lap. And I stitch them together with the thread of my attention. Long ago, I learned what I focus on creates me. Not that I ignore the bindweed, the news, the drought, the young raccoon dead beside the road. I do not turn away from the stories that make me weep. I am willing to be ferocious, to stand up for what I know is true. But I study what is beautiful, what is generous. I offer it my devotion. Even in this moment, writing this poem, I stitch in the pauses and the stumblings. These two are beautiful because they are true. I stitch in the pure potential that steeps in uncertainty. I stitch in silence. I stitch in hope.
offering our devotion to the present moment and just stitching in whatever is here through the sense doors If you find the attention is being swept away and quite restless, you might find it helpful to choose just one of those anchors of hearing or touching or whatever is standing out. Or if you're feeling, experiencing some stability, just resting in the silence and the potential of just sitting, stitching together all of it right here and now.
often find the breath is a helpful tool for stitching together my aware awareness with the present moment each breath inviting in and letting go and the space Offering our devotion to what is beautiful and generous right now without turning away from what makes us weep.
before we bring the practice to a close. You might take a few moments to see what what you offer your devotion to or what you're willing to be ferocious to stand up for. So deep bows of gratitude to Rosemary Watola Tromer for her wisdom and inspiration tonight. I hope it was supportive for you. Um, and below the recording, you'll find a link to offer rather than offer uh, support to myself tonight. Please uh, consider. Um, uh, you can buy a, a coffee. It's a, a simple app to donate um, to support Rosemary and her work. And you can also sign up. There's a link to receive um, her poems. Every day she writes a new poem. Um, for many years she's been doing that, and they're amazing. <laughs> uh, so thank you for considering that, and uh, hope to see you again.